For 11 long years, the ocean has guarded its secret. Beneath waves that have swallowed wrecks, mountains, and even civilizations, a mystery has lingered. A passenger jet that simply vanished. But now, from the darkness below, something has stirred. A pulse, faint but deliberate. A sonar echo so precise, so rhythmic, that scientists can't ignore it. It's the same frequency emitted by an aircraft's black box. And it's coming from the very same stretch of ocean where Flight MH370 is believed to have gone down. The world once called this search hopeless, a riddle buried beyond human reach. But now, with a new generation of drones armed with sonar 100 times stronger than before, that silence has finally been broken. And at the center of it all stands one man, a scientist who claims he has found a scar on the ocean floor unlike anything nature could create. Could this be where the mystery ends? Or is it just the beginning of something far more terrifying? On March 8, 2014, Malaysia Airlines Flight MH370 lifted off from Kuala Lumpur bound for Beijing. There was nothing unusual about the takeoff, no hint of what was to come. But less than an hour later, the plane's transponder went dark. Civilian radar lost it completely. Military radar then picked up a ghost, an unidentified aircraft making a sharp U-turn across Malaysia before vanishing over the Indian Ocean. No distress call, no emergency signal, just silence. For the families of the 239 passengers on board, that silence became unbearable. For investigators, it became an obsession. Dozens of nations searched, mapping over 120,000 square kilometers of seabed. They found nothing but empty ocean. Years passed, governments withdrew, and the world moved on. But deep below, something remained, waiting, undisturbed, until technology finally caught up with the truth. In 2025, Ocean Infinity, the private company leading the world's most advanced underwater searches, deployed its latest vessel, the Armada 7806. It was not just a ship, but a floating command center equipped with autonomous deep-sea drones that could dive nearly four miles down, far beyond where sunlight can reach. These drones carried synthetic aperture sonar, so powerful it could map the seafloor with centimeter-level precision. And that's when it happened. During a sweep west of Perth, one of the drones detected an anomaly. It wasn't just another rock formation or geological ridge. The sonar echo came back sharp, metallic, structured, too ordered to be natural. Measuring roughly 80 meters long and 60 meters wide, it matched the dimensions of a Boeing 777 almost perfectly. To most, this could have been coincidence. But for Dr. Vincent Line, a researcher from Tasmania who has studied the disappearance for years, this was the exact scar he had been predicting all along, a crater of impact unlike anything nature could produce. Dr. Vincent Line has been called obsessed, even fanatical, but his methods are anything but reckless. He has spent years cross-referencing satellite arcs, ocean currents, and drift models from every confirmed MH370 debris fragment ever found. His findings led him to a region of the Indian Ocean once dismissed by official investigators, an area where natural terrain made sonar scans nearly impossible. When Ocean Infinity's new data came in, Lin was one of the first to notice that a single bright pixel in the terrain model aligned exactly with his predicted coordinates. It wasn't noise. It wasn't error. It was something metallic, something buried deep beneath layers of sediment. Line claims the shape of the anomaly, oval, crater-like, surrounded by disturbed terrain, bears the unmistakable signature of a high-speed impact. To him, it is the final resting place of the aircraft that haunted the modern world. And if he's right, the truth of what really happened to MH370 may be more disturbing than anyone imagined. The Armada 7806's fleet of deep-sea drones has changed the rules of discovery. Each drone, guided by artificial intelligence, moves silently across the ocean floor, mapping terrain in overlapping grids and building an image layer by layer. They use side-scan sonar to sweep wide areas, synthetic aperture sonar for high-resolution imaging, and sub-bottom profilers that can pierce beneath the seabed to detect objects buried under silt and stone. For the first time, technology is not the limitation, it's the ocean itself. Pressure at those depths can crush steel, currents can erase traces within weeks, 
and sediments settle over debris faster than any human can respond. Yet, despite all odds, these machines have detected something that stands out, a reflection pattern consistent with twisted metallic wreckage. The signal is faint but distinct, as if the ocean is finally whispering its confession. And while governments stay cautious and experts debate possibilities, one truth is emerging from the abyss. The ocean might finally be ready to give MH370 back. When the new sonar readings came in, experts immediately recognized the pattern, a rhythmic pulse repeating every second at precisely 37.5 kilohertz, the universal frequency of an aircraft's underwater beacon. It was weak, almost buried beneath the ambient noise of the deep, but unmistakable. The last time the world heard that signal was in 2014, when the Chinese vessel Haishun-01 reported similar pings in the same sector of the Indian Ocean before they vanished without explanation. Now, 11 years later, that signal had returned. Was it a ghost? A reflection? A coincidence? Or had the black box somehow endured against all odds, still whispering its distress call from the seafloor? Engineers insisted such a thing was impossible. The batteries powering a flight recorder cannot last a decade. But scientists studying the new frequency said it didn't behave like a simple beacon. The signal drifted, modulated, almost as if bouncing off layers of metal and sediment, forming echoes that pulsed like a heartbeat. Something was alive down there, not in the biological sense, but in a way that defied silence. As Ocean Infinity's drones expanded their scan grid, they discovered something even stranger, a depression in the ocean floor unlike any previously mapped. Nearly 90 meters wide and 6 meters deep, it resembled the impact crater left by a high-speed descent. Around its perimeter lay fragments that reflected sonar in sharp, irregular bursts, the telltale signature of twisted metal. The crater sat on the edge of a trench that dropped nearly 5,000 meters into darkness, a location so remote and geologically chaotic that early search teams had avoided it altogether. When scientists simulated the flight path of MH370 using data from satellite handshakes and drift models, the trajectory intersected the crater almost perfectly. To some, this was the ultimate confirmation. To others, it was a cruel mirage. But what truly unsettled analysts was the spectral reading from the sediments surrounding the crater. Traces of alloy compositions matching aircraft-grade titanium and a faint electromagnetic residue, as if an electronic device had once discharged its final breath in that abyss. As soon as Ocean Infinity's data began circulating through the private research network, government agencies abruptly stepped in. Satellite data streams were locked, updates halted, and the company's expedition logs sealed under pending review. Malaysia issued a brief statement confirming preliminary findings, but offered no further details. Australia, which had previously led earlier searches, declined to comment entirely. Yet anonymous insiders leaked fragments of internal memos, suggesting that the discovery was indeed consistent with MH370's dimensions. Then came something even more mysterious. China, which had remained silent for nearly a decade, suddenly dispatched a deep-sea research vessel to the same coordinates. Officially, its mission was geological sampling. Unofficially, it was to verify acoustic anomalies. Why would so many governments respond to a private sonar reading with such urgency and secrecy? The timing was impossible to ignore, and to those who have followed the MH370 case from the beginning, it felt like history repeating itself, a truth too heavy to reveal. In the middle of this global silence, independent researchers uncovered something buried deep within satellite archives, an unsent packet of data transmitted from MH370's communication system moments before its disappearance. The packet was incomplete, corrupted, and dismissed as noise for years. But when reprocessed using modern algorithms, it revealed something chilling, a partial binary code referencing a reboot of the plane's satellite data unit, an event that could only occur if the system had been manually reset in flight. If true, it meant someone on board had tried to restore communication after the aircraft had already vanished from civilian radar. This revelation, combined with the sonar discovery, painted a scenario more complex than anyone imagined. Was MH370's disappearance truly an accident, 
or the result of a deliberate act that ended far from where anyone expected. And if the sonar has now found its final resting place, what else might those deep-sea drones uncover when they reach it? Wreckage, answers, or something we're not meant to find at all? For over a decade, the story of MH370 has haunted humanity, a modern ghost story written across the waves. But now, for the first time, the ocean itself seems to be answering. The new sonar signal, the metallic anomaly, the crater buried beneath six kilometers of pressure, all of it points to one terrifying possibility. The final resting place of the world's most mysterious flight has been found. Yet, instead of closure, what emerges is unease. Because nothing about this discovery fits perfectly. The sonar echoes shift as if reflecting off more than one structure. The signal pulses as though responding. The fragments glint like aircraft metal, but not exactly. It's as if the ocean floor has swallowed something that still refuses to sleep. If what lies there is truly MH370, then the deepest mystery of modern aviation may finally be solved. But if it isn't, if what the drones have found is something else entirely, then humanity is standing at the edge of a far greater revelation. One that forces us to ask whether we've been looking for the wrong thing all along. The government's sudden silence, the encrypted data, the abrupt restrictions on sonar feeds. None of it feels like routine caution. It feels like fear. Fear of what might surface once those drones make contact. The ocean does not give up its dead easily. It keeps secrets the way the sky keeps stars. Quietly, patiently, until someone dares to look close enough. And now, after 11 years, the ocean has finally blinked. Whether it's a wreckage, a relic, or a warning, the next few weeks could rewrite everything we thought we knew about the disappearance of Flight MH370, and perhaps about what else may rest in the dark beyond our reach. So if this story shook you, if it made you question whether the ocean's silence is natural or deliberate, don't look away. Subscribe to this channel because we reveal the truths others fear to uncover. Turn on notifications because when the first images from those deep sea drones reach the surface, the world may finally learn what the Indian Ocean has been hiding for 11 long years. Share this with someone who still believes the plane simply vanished. And tell me in the comments, do you think the sonar found MH370? Or did it find something the world was never meant to see?